Uh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Tilly's Your Radio, Bay Ragney here. And here he is chiming in, and welcome to the show. Better late than never. My good friend, Mr. Nick Wilkinson. What's going on there, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? You know, okay, so I started doing these therapy sessions on Thursday because I knew that I would have some good um, – now, like, it, it's going over. I'm, I'm supposed to be there for an hour. Sometimes I'm there for two. Like, I'm going to have to switch <laughs> them to Tuesdays. Uh, the, you know, you know what's funny? In my therapy session this week, or actually, when, when did you tell us the, the the other story? It was two weeks ago. I told my therapist your therapy story about the whole ISIS thing. <laughs> I don't think, she, dude. I don't think she has stopped laughing yet. <laughs> she was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, why would he say something like that? I'm like, "It's Nick." <laughs> it's, uh, she's like, no wonder his session ran over. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh too funny, dude. Uh, so, so it, I had to get one, all right? <clears throat> yeah, it was fine. It was just, you know what it was is that the appointment was late itself, and then the guy before me, his appointment yeah. ran over, so it put me behind, you know what I mean? Right, right. By the time that yeah. happened, it was rush hour, and trying to get anywhere in rush hours. You, you know what's yeah. uh, what's pretty wild? My um my older daughter actually started back going to therapy last night to a new therapist. Um and th- this therapist has a, a therapy dog with him. And oh, the really? dog's yeah, the dog sits in on the, in the sessions and you know this way the the dog's there with the with the 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 person while they're going through their, their therapy session. Which is a pretty genius idea. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, I, I think our guest is on the line. Let's find out. Is this the one? Hello. That that's her. It's her. Is this so very Vita? Yes, this is so very Vita, and I'm so very excited to be guesting on your wonderful show tonight. How are you? You know, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to guest on your show. Um, you guys do so much. I don't know when you have time to, like, run your errands. I thought I did a lot just, you know, having a blog and being an actor. It sounds like you guys really do a lot with the TV, with the online, with the podcast. I tip my hat to you. Well, thank you. We're only on once a week, so we're probably not doing as much as you. Like, I see, like, I mean, you're, like, actress voice actress, blogger, journalist, fashionista. You're you're another you're a jack of all trades yourself. Oh, I thank you. I think the hardest thing for me is always looking presentable because I love comfort and Southern California is a very comfortable place. So I think for me that's the biggest thing. But I'm impressed. I mean I didn't get to look up the others, but Bay, you're a retired wrestler and an ex guitarist for a punk metal band. You sound like yeah. a pretty cool dude, and you're somebody's husband and father, so you're also a nice guy. So that's awesome. How about that? I, I grew yeah. up from being in a punk rock band and a pro wrestler to a, a husband and father. So Even that the should best inspire the all the men of, of America to, you know, uh, be more like you and just, you know, have a, have a nice uh, lifestyle, right? I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's like it, we live in a culture where people are, everything is very ephemeral. So I think it's great that, you know, you went from the wrestling and the punk rock to being a dad. It's like you're you're your own sitcom. <laughs> what you uh, think? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've kind of slowed down as, as the gray hairs have come on more. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, at, at one point in time, definitely, it was a, definitely a, a reality series uh, was being uh the every moment of my life was yes, yeah. But it's 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 kind of oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can imagine it's, it's you, you know you you got it all out of your system. But what's yeah. really interesting to me is I also work with the wonderful Michael Joy, who's a part of your um, 
media outlets. So very cool how small the worlds are, and he and he's amazing too. So big shout out to Michael Joy. Big shout out to my amazing publicist Joe Williamson for making it happen as well. My manager, rather Joe Williamson. So very excited about that. Uh, many thanks to you as well. So excited to be guesting on your show. And I noticed that you're from Philadelphia. I'm a Marylander myself. So oh, there you yeah. have it. Very cool. Not too far. Not too far from us. Not too far at all. Not too far. Great American cities are in the Mid-Atlantic. So it's great to meet a fellow oh. Mid-Atlanticer. Now, what part of Maryland? Uh, I was born in D.C. and raised in the Maryland Burbs, Chevy Chase, and Bethesda. But that area has changed much since I grew up. Now it's very hoity-toity. When I was a kid, it was a bunch of, like, mom-and-pop shops and a Howard Johnson. Now it's just a really (laughs) highfalutin place. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's funny about the whole Michael Joy thing. Uh, Because that's how, like, I I think he had sent me a press release on something. or I guess it was probably Holy Terror. Um, yes, it was Holy Terror. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And that's how this whole thing got started. And then he sent me um, a message the other day. He goes, yeah, he goes, Vita is one of my uh, my clients, my marketing company. I'm like, oh, well, no kidding. Like, yeah. And like, where is he? I don't know. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, well, many thanks for him to making it happen and, and bringing me to light. So, yeah, I'm excited to guest on your show. And, um, you know, your magazine is great and your reviews are wonderful. So that's it's fabulous. I'm great, grateful to be on. Now, now with, with you, like with this whole, um, you know, resume you got going on here with, with all these things you do, like which came first? Like which part um, was it the actor's part? Was journalism? Like wh- where did you really get into the whole entertainment world? You know, it all happened for me. I went to University of Maryland, and um, I had a very traditional I, – I, I was born here. My parents are Persian. I had a very traditional Persian father. He was a scientist, and he's like, well, you know, you, you're, you're not interested in math or science to be an engineer, but, you know, in his practicality, he's like, I have friends at the World Bank. Maybe I can hook you up with the World Bank. So I – unfortunately for me, fortunately for my dad, I majored in economics, and I minored in theater and journalism. But the problem was, and the journalism department at University of Maryland is incredible, and the theater department, it's no Juilliard, but for that part of America, it's pretty good. University of Maryland has really grown. But when I was there, I mean, not to age myself, it was still pretty good. So I would go to the Black Box Theater and perform in shows, or I would go to work for the Diamondback. It was the largest independent student newspaper, or largest readership of an independent student newspaper. And I also worked on Capitol Hill, so I learned a lot about journalism. I didn't do as much acting as I would have liked. I did more behind-the-scenes stuff, but I did a lot of improv in college. It's ironic how everything comes back, because the theater that I did improv in uh, at University of Maryland, the Black Box Theater, was created by the guy that runs the Screen Actors Guild Conservatory in Los Angeles. He's an older fellow. So when I started taking classes at the Screen Actors Conservatory, we both realized that I performed in the theater he worked in. So I did a lot of theater when I was younger, and I did theater in the D.C. area. And then when I moved out here, I was um, I was a reporter for a Persian TV, uh, satellite TV station, but it was non-religious, non-political. I was their entertainment reporter. I would go to red carpets, and I would interview, I got to interview celebrities, but I was at the end of the press line because, you know, Access Hollywood and Entertainment Tonight would be at the front. And then, you know, Tele, Tele whatever it's called, Telemundo, sorry, excuse Telemundo, me. Yeah. And then the lower, t- after Telemundo is like the ghetto version is like, I guess it would be Azteca. So, at, like, I would be after, like, the Korean television and, like, the low-rent Latin stations, and then they put me in, and I would interview. And you have to be very aggressive because, you know, these are long, long press lines. And this was a while back, so I did, like, um, Gosh, I did Miley Cyrus's movie, the Hannah Montana movie. This was ages ago. Okay. And I did really big premieres. I did like NAACP awards. I did all sorts of things for them. I interviewed Stevie Wonder. Of course, I never got the tape of mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder or Smokey Robinson. But uh, lots of the celebrities, Chris Isaac, um, Oscar nominees, Melissa Leo, was, I guess was an Oscar winner. So I interviewed like all sorts of people, um, which was a great experience. But, you know, it was yeah, I really loved acting. So what happened from working at the Persian TV is they needed someone to voice their promos. And, you know, they're cheap. You know, it's not unionized work. This is before I was in the union. So I would um, 
I would do their uh, voiceovers for them for their promos, like, you know, coming up at 6 p.m. So I was double the work at half the price, I would joke, because, I'm you know, English is my native language, and I'm also a fluent Farsi speaker. So I would do all their promos, and I think they were trying to get a younger audience because they could have gotten some little old lady off the street to do the promos in Farsi. But they had me do the promos, and then I said to one of the guys, you know, I love voiceover, and the guy kept saying, the, the sound guy kept saying, you know, your voice is lovely. I mean, I'm a bit raspy today. But he's like, you know, I can put something together for you, and I can. I have a friend, you know, he he um, it does a, has a studio, and I can just give him your tape. So that led to one job, and then I got my voiceover demo together. And then, well, now it's really easy. Anybody with a laptop can do it. But back in the day, day it was kind of harder. So sure. um, I started getting voiceover jobs, and uh, I recently animate did my first voiceover animated feature, and it was called uh, Love Sick Fool. It's a beautiful film. It did very well at film festivals. It went at Topanga. It went at Holly Shores. It went at a lot of film festivals. And it was about this guy. He's like a lovable loser type. He can't meet the right woman. And I play the dream girl. And I also play a hipster art girl. And it, has, it stars Fred Willard, Lisa Kudrow, and Janine Garofalo. And me. And a oh, bunch wow. of other really acclaimed voiceover people. So I did that. That was on the film festival circuit. And um, now I believe it's on Amazon Prime. I think, oh, and cool. Hulu, maybe. So, yeah, I did that recently. So <laughs> it all came out of voiceover, and then I also did acting, too, because I was an actor in college, and I, you know, I did a lot of radio in college, too. So that led to different radio things. Like, I was on, uh, I was a guest co-host on the L.A. Talk radio show, and I'm going to be guest co-hosting tonight, as soon as this inf- interview ends, on the Amber Lynn show. Amber Lynn is, is an amazing oh. host, and she is the number one show on LA Talk Radio. It's Rock and Sexy Show. So yeah, I'm excited to be guesting on Amber's show, and um, I'm really? excited to be guesting on your show. So that just led the thing into acting. I think over time, with the internet and technology and social media, it all melds into one. Don't you find with the totally driven entertainment, the TV, the the podcast, it all melds into one, the world of entertainment, the world of media. It kind of, there's more of a crossover now than I'd say five, ten years ago, you know? So you can do more things now. Yeah, totally. Like, when we started this whole thing, uh, you know, so actually about six years now, um, be, before I was working with somebody on something that was, like, kind of, not the same format, but the same kind of structure almost. It, it kind of like I was helping them put something together, but it was just with the world of professional wrestling. And he was just was like pigeonholed into the world of pro wrestling. I'm like, dude, like, there's a, like a whole world of entertainment out there between, you know, TVs, movies, uh, animation, sports, um, wrestling, music, comedy. Like, let's cover it all. He's like, nah, I just want to do wrestling. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go do my own thing. And, you know, and that's, I've been like, you know, you have social media, you have YouTube, you have all these different outlets and all these different worlds of entertainment. Have fun with it. Let's cover everybody. Let's make everybody famous. You know what I mean? And I mean, look at wrestlers are now in the mainstream. Look at some of our most famous actors, or you know, John Cena and all the others. Or they're in mainstream movies. It's it's for you. It's melded. Even with the punk rock thing, everything is melded. So you know, it's mm-hmm. interesting how it comes it comes across. You no? Know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you, you never would have thought. You know, um, you know, thirty years ago when Hulk Hogan was. The, the big, huge breakout star, but he thought, oh, he's going to cross over and be this big Hollywood star. And he we never made that Hollywood star. But now, you know, you have no, to No, but he was in a lot of funny mm-hmm. B movies. He was in a lot of yeah, great yeah. B movies. Yeah, he was. So, you yeah, know, my was. one claim to fame of interviewing uh, a famous wrestler was the Iron Sheik, because I'm Persian, right? And he's Persian. Uh, yeah. And I interviewed him, and I got to hold his belt. And, you know, he's a really nice man. I don't know if you saw the Netflix documentary, but he's really suffered... Yeah, yeah, so he's he's a really, really nice guy, and I know his nephews, and I even got to go to his roast because I had interviewed him. They were so nice enough to stay in touch with me that they invited me to the roast, and, like, David Arquette was there, and it was, like, a really, really cool crowd of people. Like, it's interesting the fans are, like, all kinds of people. Like, I saw, like, you know, conservative-looking, you know, older people there. Mm-hmm. It was, like... All kinds of people are fans of wrestling, which was really interesting to me. I thought it would be like guys that you see at like a wings place or like a sports bar. (laughs) But it was like a whole cross-section of uh, Los Angeles, you know, all races, all, you know, faiths, all, you know, socioeconomic uh, divides, if you will. So it was was interesting and fun to see. I wish you could have gone. You probably would have run into friends there. There were a lot of wrestlers there. 
Uh, probably. I, I'll tell you what. Well, here, I'll play this for you real quick to give you a quick chuckle. This is Aru Sheik. Don't be jabroni. Listen to the uh, number one radio station, Tolo Tolo station, and we have a good day. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious! <laughs> I love the jabroni thing. He is such a nice man, though. He is such a nice yeah. man. But yeah, yeah. Apparently, I did not know this in Iran. I think he was like the Shah of Iran, the King of Iran's like royal guard or something. He had something really important with that country so i think for yeah. him it was really hard so you know he played this bad guy but he not to get political he was really i think against that regime so i to put himself on the forefront was very risky for him because you know he, those are crazy people <laughs> so <laughs> it was interesting getting to know him and interview him and like see him as a person as opposed to like a cartoon so that was interesting for me too i mean it seems like you know you all are such multifaceted people you have so many interests how many wrestlers are in punk rock bands you know so <laughs> it's 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 very cool it's very cool that's funny never thought of it that way <laughs> but, yeah you could uh, be your my, own punk rock song yeah uh, Mike Joyce sent me a message. He said it was for the movie uh, Nemesis 5. Oh, I wasn't in Nemesis 5, but my dear friends Donna Lee Heising and uh, Mel Novak were in that film and uh, it's done by this incredible young director that you guys are going to be hear- hearing so much about, Dustin Ferguson. So I hope to work with Dustin in the future. He's very, very talented and just an amazing young filmmaker. He's like on the pulse of uh, indie filmmaking, so uh, it wasn't and ne- it wasn't Nemesis Five for me, but for my friends. But I hope to work with all of them soon. And I've worked with Donna before, and I've had the honor of working with Mel Novak before. I actually worked with Mel on Holy Terror, which is eleven on Amazon, number eleven on Amazon Prime UK. And I play this very troubled girl named Haley. And it, Holy Terror has just been doing very well for itself. I mean, it's gotten a life for its, of its own right now on the internet. It's doing very well on downloads and what have you. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed that role. It was a very, um, it was a very interesting project. It was with people that I really admire: Gregory Hatnaka, Rich Mallory, and of course Mel Novak from Bruce Lee's Game of Death. And I also got to work with Christine DeBell from Meatballs, and she's just wow. an incredible actress. And so was Mel. So it's, you know, the cool thing about Mel is he's done so many stunts that um, it was a little bit uh, more exerting than most shoots. I was, a, let's just say I was a very troubled woman in, in Holy Terror. And he was <laughs> kind of giving me, it, it's enough of an acting lesson to watch people like Christine and Mel act, but for him to tell me how to not injure myself was like, you know, the best stunt lesson that I could have ever gotten for free on a set. So that was, a, that was an incredible experience working with them. And, you know, they're just such incredible people. And Donna as well, I've worked with Donna too before, natural born filmmakers. She's very, very talented. And I, Look forward to working on more projects with Donna. So um, just excited about that. And also, I'm going to be in Nation's Fire. It's coming out this spring. It was uh, oh, wow. written, directed, and produced by the amazing Thomas J. Churchill. And it stars, God, incredible people, two-time Oscar nominee Bruce Dern, uh, Emmy winner Gil Bellows, a lot of the cast of Sons of Anarchy, UFC fighter Chuck Liddell, Lorraine mm-hmm. Landon from the movie Sky, uh, with Diane Kruger, and she was in Maniac Cop. So, you know, she's an actress and legend in her own right. So I got to work with these incredible people on Nation's Fire. And um, it's a very, it's a, it's about, it's like the theme is a motorcycle, it's a family in the motorcycle realm. I mean, there's a lot of the Sons mm-hmm. of Anarchy stars in it. But it's also about, um, Krista Grata is the lead, and uh, she's amazing in it. And it's also about this, she's like this tough biker chick, and she, you know, she's got to deal with all sorts of issues, you know, with her kid, and she's a single mom. And it's an interesting take on the biker culture and women's empowerment, which I don't want to beat it over the head with a stick, but it's, you know, very important right now in Hollywood. So that just goes, goes to show you that Thomas Churchill is ahead of the pack. He um, came up with a slogan, Make America Great Again, well before Donald Trump did in his movie Checkpoint. And it was like about a civil war. I mean, God forbid that should happen in this country. But my point is that Churchill is really ahead of the game. And I feel like I told him, you know, you should be like a, you should open a storefront on Ventura. You're almost like a psychic with the way the country is headed. So this movie is a lot about women's empowerment. And, you know, we did this well over a year ago. So it's interesting to see how that comes about. And I really enjoyed working with him. And there was just a really tremendous, talented ensemble cast. I mean, needless to say, Bruce Dern, Gil Bellows, and all the rest of them. 
They're such, such talented people, and I'm so honored to be working with them. That's awesome. Yeah, you, I, like, I, and I was looking on your IMDb, and you got like all this other stuff that's uh, like completed, ready to go too. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, other stuff going. I mean, I'm most excited about this stuff, but yeah, there's other stuff that I've been doing. I'm very excited about, and uh, just you know, a plugging ahead and some some things that I've signed on to do that aren't on IMDb yet. So I'm excited about those, but I can't really mention those. Maybe hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I could come back in the future. But yeah, I have Absolutely. a few other projects. Copperhead Creek, Girl in a Coma, Circus of Dread. I did Hypostrophilia with this incredible filmmaker named Roman Simon. He's Haitian. And he is just a real raw talent. He also has a film festival, Lucky Strike Film Festival, which I was honored to be um, awarded at. And Hypostrophilia stars Quentin Aaron. He was in the movie The Blind Side with Sandra Bullock. So it was right. a real honor to work with him. He's so talented. I got to work with him. I got to work with um, Sadie Katz, Jenna Willis, Massey Furland. It's a real, real talented cast. Um, and it was just an honor to work with these people. They were really, really talented. And Roman did a great job. And it was great to be honored by him at his film festival. And I was also honored at some other film festivals, Wind International, the Los Angeles and Hollywood Awards. It's a community of Nigerian actors and filmmakers in Hollywood. And they're a really great bunch of people, uh, very worldly, very sophisticated. So it was an honor being a presenter and awardee of that as well. So it's, it's been a great year, and I'm, I'm very pleased this punch. And I'm also reoccurring on uh, the suspense show, which was on XM Satellite Radio. It was the precursor to the Twilight Zone. And it's with John Aldisek as the writer, director, producer. And I've gotten to work with some great actors on that. Uh, not in my episodes, but I will in future episodes. They have people like Marilyn Gigliotti from Clerks. They've had some really great actors on that show. So it, it's been great working on that. I worked again with Mel Novak on the suspense show on another episode. So uh, cool. it's a three-time Peabody uh, Award-nominated show, so that was just a wonderful experience. Wow. Yeah, see, like, you're, again, I, I got nothing. You, you got it all going on over there. Oh, you got everything going on. I wish I could be a wrestler and in a punk rock band. <laughs> I'm too wooden, though. Know. I don't know if I could be a wrestler, but I mean, those wrestler chicks, they look tough. Now, now how about uh, in your website as well, So Very Vito? Now, I mean, that's you covering red carpet events and entertainment things and. You know, it kind of came out of me going to events and people would sit, say, oh, my God, you dress like a million bucks, uh, you know, and the acting is like everything else. You know, it's feast or famine. For many years it was famine. Now there's a little bit of a feast and hopefully more feasting. But with nice. acting, I mean, it is what it is. And they'd be like, well, how do you dress like this? And I remember some girl saying, are you rich? And I kept thinking, oh, my God, really? So it's kind of it kind of evolved and it's it, people pay attention to my posts, they'll see lately it's hair and makeup by me because I've become quite skilled. You know, I, I deal with some of the best hair and makeup people in, in the country, if not the world. I'm very blessed for that, but, and I listen. But I think a lot of it is, you know, my wardrobe, if I get discounts on stuff, oftentimes I get gifted stuff, but sometimes, you know, I do have to pay. So it came out of people being curious about what I wear, uh, you know, how I live, lifestyle, that kind of thing. So it was just a natural curiosity for people because oftentimes, you know, as a journalist, I was in between outlets. I had left Persian TV. I had left um, different L.A. talk radio. So, you know, I had a little bit of a following. So I think those people were just curious as to what I was up to. And I was, I'm always very honest and earnest in my posts, and I think people like not to be talking so showy offy about me. I don't want to be a humble brag, but a lot of these bloggers are great, but they're just, you know, pretty girls with the chihuahuas. I think I write a, I write a lot in my blogs, and I think that kind of keeps it. And I love the chihuahua girls. Many of them are my friends, but I think I keep it. It's a lot. It's like a journalist writing a blog. It's not like a blogger writing a blog. I mean, the, some of the right. pictures are pretty, but it's really, I'm really about content. So I'm also on the board of a couple charities, and I'm involved with a couple charities. Like one of them is Artists for Trauma, and um, I, you know, I host their events, uh, some other charities as well. And it all came out of my So Very Vita events were doing so well. So I guess I stick my fingers in a lot of different pies, if you will. But I think you have to diversify when you're in entertainment. You can't just do one, one or two things. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh... Where should we send everybody to uh, to keep up to date on all your happenings? Should we send them to the website? Oh, sure, sure. 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter is at Vida Ghaffari, V-I-D-A-G-H-A-F-F, like Frank, A-R-I. I need to work on the show very Vida. I've been so busy blogging. Or they can just follow me on my blog. It's at www.soverivida, V-I-D-A, dot com. Now, are you going to do the song for us? I saw, uh, as I was go- going through stuff on YouTube, that there's like a song. Oh, my so God. Many- that guy is very talented, Motown Maurice. But I don't know. You're the singer. Do you want to sing it with me? <laughs> <laughs> So very Vita. So 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 very Vita. So 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 very Vita. And then I can't I can't remember the rest. I think the whole thing was so 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 very Vita. But yeah, I was that guy was a character. He's uh, a, uh, a known actor and uh, I guess a uh, rapper Motown Maurice. So yeah, uh, you even know the so very Vita song. But it's been an honor and thrill to guest on your show. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, for doing it and calling in and uh, welcome to our world. Thank you. It's an honor to be in your will, uh, world, and a big shout-out to all the everybody across the country tuning in, especially our wonderful Mid-Atlantic peeps from Pennsylvania, Maryland, D.C., Virginia, the DMV. Big shout-out. Thank you so much. It was an honor being on your show. Thanks again. You too. Thanks, Vita. Take care, and good luck with everything, and stay, uh, stay in touch, and let's do it again. For sure, for sure. It's my honor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take, good night. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Are we there? She goes. Hi. The one and only Vita Gafari. Check her out. So very Vita. She's all over the freaking place. Just go on Facebook. Look it up. So very Vita. Instagram. Vita Gafari. She's everywhere. Trust me. Check her out. 